Chafing Armor Podcast, episode 92. Feet, feet, feet. No, just kidding. No, no. Not doing, not doing that. Not doing that. Chafing Armor Podcast, episode 92. A Tangled Web We Weave. Welcome back to the Chafing Armor Podcast. I'm your host and uh, irascible Dungeon Master, Michael Corley. And with me tonight is Izzy. Izzy, tell everyone who you will be playing. I will be playing Marezi Mugra, half-orc barbarian, slightly done with all this. <laughs> Indeed. And also with us is James. James, tell us who you will be playing. Hi, everybody. I'm playing uh, Pent and Chalice. A spell scale sorcerer, and I do not normally talk like this. I, I think your real accent has finally come out. <laughs> Thank goodness. Uh, and also with us tonight is Dare. Dare, who will you be playing? I will be playing Tix Birchmanson, a gnome cleric with very small feet and a big step. Indeed. And a big sword uh, that he has used, I mean, axe, I should say, that he's used successfully against a uh, certain member. I uh, shouldn't have said member. And <laughs> also with us is Riley. Riley, Hello, tell us who you will be I'm playing. I'm playing Thora Greyfield, a tiefling fighter. And Lee, uh, would you tell me, uh, with all of the things that were going on earlier at the end of the last episode, uh, the uh, the body of uh, Osokai being found and the various combat happening, including uh, this this bewinged individual, uh, not winged, but feathered individual trying to escape. Um, at the When we last left uh, this character, what would you have been trying to do? What would you have been doing at that moment? Um, having noticed, but been kind of, I got quote unquote sprung, um, mm -hmm. I want to get my stuff back. Okay. And then I, I, um, I kind of want it. It's kind of important to me. So, uh, are you going to try to do that at this moment? You certainly can. Uh, I'm going to try and slink off to get it. Uh, yes. Yes. I think I will. Uh, okay. the, the, the better part of me knows it's a bad idea, but mm -hmm. it, the, these are kind of important and I don't, I, I almost lost them. I really don't want to do it again. So I'm going to try and get it back. I would like you to make a uh, stealth roll for me. Oh boy, my favorite. Mm hmm. <laughs> it's it's my highest. One might say. No. Ah! Uh, so I just rolled a natural twenty. So that's thirty-four. Uh, yes. So like a like a shadow upon a shadow, even with the rising sun, it's not you. You know this from years of experience. It's not just about like hiding in a shadow it's about avoiding detection mm -hmm. and it's about letting people's eyes fall to the interrogation of this cultist that they're talking to and his belt lying on the ground next to him and uh just just waiting for those moments to move when no one is looking at you as you stealth your way to osokai's body and you see that uh describe to the uh listener what uh does that blade look like so these blades were given to me by a very important person um, who is no longer with us. And they are, they're just standard daggers. You could pick up what would the blade would look like in any blacksmith or weapon store or armory. Mm -hmm. The difference being is the hilts of these blades have been customized. They are leather wrapped in dark black stained leather and they're a little tiny semicircular cuts all around to sort of look like feathers and the very pommel of the blades look like raven head and okay. i have two of them well i have one of them on me and the other oh, one is in the body raven heads yes so i want that back because uh -huh. it's mine so uh, you go to the body, and I'm going to say for the purpose of storytelling that uh, Tix's spell is still on the body. However, this is not an attack. And uh, I'm not you are, evil. And you are not evil. Uh, <laughs> so 
uh, you reach down and you grab hold of your blade and pull it out, and several things happen simultaneous. As you pull it free, you suddenly, everything seems to slow down, and you look up and you see a elf looking at you, just uh, standing in the corner uh, right at the alley where the bobcat paw in. And you've seen this elf before, but not in person. You've seen her in a photograph. I said photograph. <laughs> yes, right. You've seen her in a painting that had a silver frame uh, with a inscription upon it. Uh, her yes. name was Osphalor. And Osphalor is the dead mother of Pit, of Pitnik, uh, who went by Pet. And you know that this woman is not in the land of the living. And she is just looking at you. She's just staring at you. And she nods her head once. And then she looks down at the body below you. And this is when things kind of speed up just a little bit. But everybody, uh, with the exception of this uh, cultist that you're interrogating, all of you get this sudden, instant vision where you see the Raven Queen. You see the Raven Queen, and she is handing a now perfectly clean and folded shirt to Osokai. And the second he takes the shirt, whoom! He is flying. He is flying and he is soaring through the air. He is soaring through the astral plane. He is soaring to the realm of the traveler. The realm of the traveler where there is an endless field and game. And his people wait for him there. And that's when whoom, he is caught suddenly in a web of unimaginable size. And you can hear like the sound of creaking cables as they stretch out into infinite blackness. You can see almost the cosmos. And you hear a sound of a doom, doom, doom as the web vibrates. And you see a drider, a terrifying visage of Loth, the Spider Queen, the demon web spinner, as she approaches the soul of Osukai. And you hear her going, <laughs> and then whoom, you're all back. And you see the cultist kind of looking at all of you, like, because you all, all of you suddenly, like, stared off into the middle distance for a second, uh, and then you're back. And what would you like to do? Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> we, we have established before that Marezi does not care for all of this uh, type of stuff. So that is a good response. Did everyone um, just see that? From what I remember, the rest of this party's very first encounter with, with well, the, the quote-unquote servants of Loth was where Marezi got Aki. Uh, that is correct. Uh, down in the Underdark. Mm -hmm. um, With yes. the pillars. With the pillars. Rescued, uh, rescued from crucifixion on the pillar. Yes. Uh, however, uh, if you it, you may recall that the um, that altar was actually desecrated. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, y'all remember, especially Tix, who knows more about these things, being horrified at that idea is, is anyone in the Underdark desecrating the, um, the altar of Lolf <laughs> would it just be, you know, it would just be suicide. Uh, and it speaks to the power of the forces working against them. And in fact, one of the creatures impaled on those pillars was a giant spider. Uh, so things are not always quite what they seem. Right. Just a little, little note there. Um, but there is no doubt to any of you that uh, Tix's, I'm sorry, that Osokai's immortal soul is in terrible danger. What else is new? Yeah, when is it not? <laughs> Tix, I would like you to make a religion roll. And that is a 17. 17? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that does not give you a, a tremendous details because you needed to roll very high for this, but that's still 17. 
you know that there is a possibility that in the fancier area near the high the tower high which is a part of zental keep that uh there may be a temple with a priest or priestess with the ability with the power to resurrect uh osokai you do not have this ability yet nope not yet um and uh you just just from even your your brief time here uh one of the uh people that you've seen passing by did have a coin that you recognized as the symbol of Tamora, which is a goddess of luck, but is not a evil goddess or anything like that, uh, known as uh, the Lady Who Smiles. And you know that that's probably a good bet if you were able to find that temple, that there may be someone there with the power to resurrect Osokai. Well, then I will fill everybody else in on that information. Say we scoop up Osokai and glare at the Birdman, get everybody back to Audrey. And hey, what is that Birdman doing? Yes, uh, that is a good question. What is that Birdman doing? Uh, other than I'm other than retrieving my stuff, uh, <laughs> it's well, you, mine. Have, you have already you have okay. successfully retrieved your uh, knife for certain. It is no longer sticking out of the back of Osokai. Okay. It is now uh, out and covered in his blood. Uh, well, I will clean the blade on the body. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> you all his, see this? It, it's, no it's, respect. It's, it's his It's his blood. <laughs> yep. I don't, I don't want it. Just giving it back. <laughs> um, you want that blood back? And, 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 and uh, just, you want and that just, blood back? And just kind of, you know, hold it up and... and Stare at it. Make sure it's not damaged or like the, the blade's not me. I didn't do it, but mm. it's my blade and I want to know if it's okay. Um, it is in perfect condition. Good. Uh, right. I will sheath it and I'm going to see what happens next. The, the, I, okay. All I wanted was my staff, but I mean, they've got they've got the threat to me kind of well contained, you know. I'm just going to see what happens next. I mean, I'm kind well, of in a corner at the moment, so I don't really have money where else to go. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of threats, um, uh, Penton sees a, this bird creature retrieving its dagger from the back of Osakai, mm-hmm. thinking to himself, hey, it's very possible that he's the one that killed Osakai. Yep. Well, uh, I mean, so, that is... That is very likely, uh, given the circumstances that you see. Um, so, given that, and given the fact that Penton is not happy about that, um, he is going to cast a lightning bolt at him. Okay. Because justice and, you know, vengeance. <laughs> okay. Because we don't know where this guy came from. Do I get a reflex on that? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You get a reflex saving throw to take half damage. Oh, you're lucky. 16 points. Okay. Okay. Reflex save is... Oh, nice. Uh, 30. 29. Okay, well, that definitely yeah. uh, halves it to uh, 8. Well, uh, that's the and- thing. I also have uh, evasion. Ah. Any attack within a successful reflex save would deal half damage instead take no damage. Okay. There you go. All right. Uh, so, so uh, I'll just first, uh, I'll just hear the the the, cr- the bristling in the air and just kind of take a step to the side. And kind of like we had talked about in the previous episode, that uh, Penson's a pretty easygoing guy, but you actually see the the almost ripple of the the dragon essence beneath him as this anger rises up, and this is his uh, friend of uh, you know not quite, but working on nearly two years uh, that y'all have been companions and battles in arms and uh, you think this guy might have killed him. Electricity ripples from you and fires out and just with supernatural speed, uh, this individual uh, darts out of the way. Uh, what would you uh, like to do, Lee? Uh, okay, first things first. Um... Putting the blades away was probably not the smartest thing to do. 
not not very right now. I, I, I'm with your character. With the character, I'm, yes. I'm faced with 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 five very angry people. Um, four of them in the party, and one of them with a small man on his back. Um, <laughs> so the the sound of uh, the sound of a burning prisoner prisoner being burned at the stake screaming i didn't do it okay floods the alley and he will pull out the two blades and gaze at them lovingly and then lay them these are the things he treasures the most not that the party knows it but mm-hmm. and put them on the ground and sit okay uh you Lay them on the ground, and uh, you all see the reverence with which he uh, blades, does it. Blades toward me. Okay. Uh, so that they're not at a at a moment's notice to to pick up an attack. Though you all do know how incredibly fast uh, and dexterous this uh, character is. Um, I should des- like I should do? describe yes. I should describe it a bit more too. Um, since please. it wasn't really yes, I'm please. It. Um, so what you're looking at is he's he's short. Ish, not as short as Teeks, but quite close, really. He's actually he's about five foot two, um, but he's covered in. Think of a a, a humanoid raven. That's pretty much it. Um, Thank you. Some, he's ra- he's he's wearing some leather armor, um, some uh, studded. Yeah, some studded leather. It's been darkened, um, but he also has a hood over his face uh, or his head. Um, keeping his most of his features in shadow, aside from the very tip of his beak. His eyes are a pale amber, and they kind of catch the light every so often. Um, but there's a there's also a weird lump on one of his legs, um, the, almost almost like you you'd expect like a broken bone that's healed naturally. That that's the kind of lump he has. Um, and the body's just kind of grown around it. Uh, but yeah, that, that's, it, it's very difficult to see his face when his hood is up, but as he sits, he pulls the hood off so that you can see his, his head, his face, and he just sits, blades on the ground, facing towards him in a, uh, the handles are at a V shape, so the point of the blades come towards him. Um, and he just sits cross-legged on the ground. Well, I'll start walking up to him. Uh, Tix is going to uh, use the hook of his axe to uh, yank on the man's throat as he jumps down so that the man falls backwards on his back very hard, commands him to, or tells him to stay put, and Mer- ask Morezzi to watch him. Well, we're talking about the cultist, right? right. We're watching. Yes. talking about the cultist. <laughs> sit on him, Morezzi. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so this is what I do. I sit well, on. Well, basically, him. sit on. <laughs> basically, Tix jumps down and uses his weight to use the axe like a hook to yank the man down and bounce his head off the pavement. <laughs> Uh, you you hear a ba-doink-doink doink as uh, his head ricochets off the ground. Um, and Marezzi yeah. curb stomps him. No. <laughs> no. Uh, it act- <laughs> uh, uh, that actually does four points of damage. Uh, and like you see like like blood uh, seeping out from the back of his head because uh, he has no way to defend himself. And it just ka-tong yep. as he hits the ground and he is in a, he's in a tremendous amount of pain. Uh, I'm sure you're you're all broken up about that. Yeah, I'm, I'm in Just tears. Crying, yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, walking up to this uh, bird creature, I'm just going to start saying Kenku because that's that's what he is. Um, okay. Yes, yes. And ben- uh, Benton would know, but I don't know if the others would. Yeah, uh, definitely, Morezzi. You definitely don't know who this is. T- uh, Athora, you you might have heard of them. Uh, Athora, you've been traveling in this continent. Uh, this is the same continent that you have been completing your quest on, so you may have 
heard of these, but you've definitely never met one. Okay. Uh, Tix does know. Tix rolled a 24. Okay. So uh, I'm going to say that, that Pinton, you uh, you have actually briefly met a Kinku before, and Tix, you are, are fairly knowledgeable about what they are, but you've never actually met right. one. Right. Okay. Um, so walking up, kick the knives away from him. Uh, I will just gen- gen- try right. and jump for them. <laughs> just, to, just to get the, not, not like angrily, just, you know, to get them out of the way and out of reach. There is still a slight jump, but he restrains himself. All right. All right. Listen, Kanku, explain yourself as best as you can manage. There, he dips his head. The only sound that comes out of his, the only voice that sound that comes from him is that of a whining dog. Okay. Should he, like, write it down? Can we get him a pad of paper? So you're saying you didn't do this? Yes or no? Nod, shake. He nods. Do you know who did it? His hand comes out and wobbles in there. Maybe. Hmm. Does it have anything to do with this guy back here? Points at the uh, cultist. He nods and the laugh comes back out again. (laughs) Yeah, that one. (laughs) That one. All right, so he's been murdered by cultists, and they used your knife? Does that sound right? He vehemently shakes. Okay, well, the he knife was at, in his... He points, at a, he points at a Thora, and makes a sound of fire. Mm. I'm, I'm just trying to wrap head, my head around why your knife was in his back. <laughs> and Thora, you, you are a little surprised that suddenly in this conversation, uh, you being the newest member of the group, that suddenly this uh, perhaps assassin suddenly points at you. Uh, and you, you, uh, you actually recognize the sound of those flames, Athora. There's a very specific sound that hellish rebuke makes. Oh. Uh, and you recognize that sound immediately. Like a spell or like hell hell? Well, hellish rebuke is a special ability that, um, yeah. tieflings have. Cool. That's hellish re- rebuke. Um, I don't think that's quite good. So we Obviously, s- he can't do it. He can just imitate the sound that it makes. Right. <laughs> right. So we are Otherwise, everybody for- would be cowering now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you're saying he was murdered by a tiefling? He nods. And we're right. looking for a tiefling. I sigh deeply. Oh, boy. I hope it's not the same tiefling. <laughs> mm. That would complicate things a bit. What's the te- What's his name again? Oh, Prognatty. Prog- Jimmy. Natty. It's it's not Prognati, is it? Before every response, by the way, he's looking at the the knives. But he 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 <laughs> he, he looks he looks up and kind of cocks his head to the side and a single word, no, in a very feminine voice. Okay, well that's good. Um, all right, now that now that the situation is under control, I'll walk over and uh, uh, pick up the two knives by the. By the points and uh, proffer the the handles toward the Kenku, and he kills us immediately. <laughs> <laughs> These With are my- uh, plus ten uh, daggers of slaying. <laughs> they kill you in a single <laughs> touch. No, I just just a tip. You probably don't want to touch the points. Um, uh, holding holding with, the flats, you know. Yeah, with almost almost reverentially, he kind of looks directly into your eyes as he takes them and the sound of a priest bless you my child <laughs> as he takes them uh, and places them back into and their, a thora oh go ahead back into their uh their scabbards on his belt uh a thora i would like you to make a reflex saving throw oh boy three it's no. just a random peasant on the street throwing uh, a rock um, <laughs> uh, you are 100% correct. Uh, Whoa, what? <laughs> you, are, you are struck in the back of the head by garbage. Um, and you see uh, several of the uh, people of Zintil keep uh, kind of, they, they all scattered when the giant acid dripping bug came out. And now they're coming back and they're, they're yelling at y'all and they're saying things like, you know, this is your fault. This is your doing. We should have never let you in this town, you freaks! 
And uh, unfortunately, of all the prejudices that they have, guess what? <laughs> it's most concentrated towards tieflings. <laughs> Um, and so they, they, while they're, while they're yelling at all of you, uh, they're especially yelling at, uh, at you, particularly Athora. Go back to your feet, Pip. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't uh, resist. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if that pre-show stuff's going to make it in or not, but if it does that, then you'll all know. Um, Yeah. So I'd like what, to keep in feet pit, but not even the context. No one will ever know. <laughs> no one will ever know what the feet pit is. <laughs> That'd be great. Uh, see, it really what it really comes down to is I usually just cut out the in between part, and so it's if I remember not to, and then I can add it as a bonus feature. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, Please, the feeties. <laughs> the feeties. <laughs> Worst comes to worst, I still have the backup. <laughs> True that. A good point. Good um, point. Um, Tix is going to um, turn around and see if he recognizes. Was it the lady from the uh, Ye Chicken? Why, as a matter of fact, it was. It is exactly that woman. And he is going to to swagger up to her and put uh, Destiny Seeker right under her nose <laughs> and say, this is the second time that you have acted very rudely. It would be a shame if somebody had to teach you some manners. It uh, would be best if you, have to, if you went home. And that is a... 19 plus 3, so that's uh, 22. 22. Um, yeah, she, she pees herself a little bit. <laughs> uh, it, it's She is absolutely terrified, because she's, she's just in righteous indignation, and she's not expecting anything to uh, combat that. And the last thing she's expecting is you, the one uh, race that she doesn't have a problem with, suddenly walk up to her and... This uh, deadly, deadly axe comes up to her under her chin, and uh, just you, you just see a little dampening uh, in the skirts there. <laughs> cut her uh, some slack. She, She's had seven children. That, well, yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. Uh, as she as she goes, I'm just gonna just gonna go back to just gonna leave now, and she turns and and runs. And Tix makes an uh, announcement to the rest of the crowd. It would be best if all other non combatants leave the immediate area before they accidentally get caught in my axe's swing. Uh, give Brutal. me, uh, well, now I'm going to let you use the same role from before okay. and they just <laughs> like, 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 uh, uh, evaporating in a uh, fog in the, in the morning sun and the, the early morning is now rising. Uh, and you can actually see in the distance, the, uh, high tower area, where uh, you think um, the temple might be of tomorrow. Okay. Now well, I've had enough of uh, this place. Let's uh, let's visit some place that's going to be a little more friendly. That let's sounds like a good simple. idea. Marezi, if you <laughs> the, the, the Kenku laughs like a hmm. genuine guttural guffaw, like someone's told a joke. What about me? Marezi, if you'd grab Osakai's body and let's head to the temple. How about the cultist? What are we doing with him? Good question. What are you doing with if him? If only we had three feet of rope to tie him up with. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty sure we all have an adventurous kit. We can all pitch in 12 feet yes, of rope. But there is a very special three foot of rope uh, mm -hmm. that, that has come in handy again and again. We get out the three foot of rope. <laughs> Uh, just like y'all, y'all actually hear the. <laughs> Every time it gets used, it becomes a little more magical. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Until finally one day, it will actually be magic rope. Uh, yeah. It, le that old woman it legitimately gains power of belief. That's right. I've, I've got to uh, enchant this thing somehow. 
Yeah. The, well, it, the, the funny thing is, in this world, and, and definitely in my setting, uh, something I want you all to know, there, and for those who played uh, the two drow characters, um, there are two ways to enchant an item in this world. One is you spend a lot of materials and money, and you enchant it. And then there's also, if the item has great value to someone, or if it is something very special, you know, like this is the sword that won a mighty battle, then a very, very relatively small amount of materials can be used to enchant it, which is why um, the drow has the plus one AC that was made for him by Tix, the little boat that carved for him, and why uh, Osokai's mace was able to be enchanted so easily to be a plus one mace. Uh, so I, I'm just telling you that at some point you might actually be able to do that with this rope. Um, because that's that's how things work in this world. Uh, so, uh, Morezi, are you gathering up uh, ye old corpse? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, as you, you kind of pick him up and the tongue kind of ah, lolls out. He is very, very dead and he's, he's uh, very he, cold to the touch. Sh- it should be noted, he smells reeks of alcohol. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, he always smells and now it's more smell. Including one that you would probably recognize. That's true. Uh, in fact, uh, Marezi specifically, you recognize uh, there is a smell that just burns your nostril and you think, ah, home. <laughs> uh, there is a, a particular kind of orcish mead that you have seen normal humans drink and it just kill them. Like that is how strong it is. Uh, and so clearly at some point uh, he was drinking that and it might speak to uh, him being in a somewhat compromised state uh and huh. in fact as you pick up his body you actually see that he has other wounds that huh. uh were not caused by this stabbing so something something else happened <laughs> to say the very least well i think we should probably load up an audrey and take her and head okay. to the temple over there just um, are we Marazzi, carrying just... the cultist with us or you know, let's let's put him inside and see what we get information we can get out of him. Oh, it's it's yeah. good penance here because Tix was contemplating such something much more permanent. We're in a bit of a violent streak, aren't we, there, Tix? He's worked very hard to try and keep Osokai alive for a very long time, and True. now it doesn't look good. I was going to say small man no. syndrome, but you know, well, don't give up hope yet. Um, so yeah, let's go inside and uh, Marezi, please don't put. T- uh, Oh, so kind of down near the skull. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you said that. I was, I, I oh think Michael goodness. was, I reckon Michael was just like, please put it down. Please put it down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's going to be, he's going to be hard to uh, resurrect with all of his fluids slurped out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> turned into a desiccated husk. Um, though there's always the cultist. Uh, and, and by the way, Marezi, I mean, uh, Pinton, <sighs> it's fine right now, but. Audrey is very hungry after that sprint. I bet. Uh, so and the, and the attacks and FYI. whatnot. Yeah, yeah. We do have uh, a cultist. So, uh, just, you know, just throwing that out there. Uh, <laughs> as you begin make your way down uh, the streets uh, and you see people parting, and as y'all had noted before, the, the, this, uh, Audrey is strange enough, but in this town, in this xenophobic town, uh, Audrey has a much stronger reaction that people are just like, ah! And like running and screaming and Running out of the way. I'm going to assume um, I'm still back I'm in the okay alley, with by that. the way. Oh, uh, well, you, are you not coming with them? I mean, they just gave me their blades and got into the, the Audrey. And no one invited me. And I'm probably not going to go with the people that just wanted to kill me. Well, to be fair. Well, do you all want to bring uh, this uh, king to? <laughs> That's their I call. I think that we so. should invite him. Well, At if anything, he, he seems to know useful. what's up with this cultist. So. It's true. He does, ha- he does appear to have relevant information. I, I, he, he did kind of point me out. Tix is in a foul mood, so Tix won't be the one that offers the invitation. He's kind of still glaring at the king coup. Um, he looks at Penton and shrugs. Um, come with us, king and we'll get this all sorted out. He, okay. he, he bows his head, puts his cloak back ever, on. Have you ever uh, ridden in a bird hut before? He looks you square in the eye and then looks down at his own legs. <laughs> uh, you are a bird hut. <laughs> <laughs> and the bird hut in Soviet Russia, bird is you. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
he kind of, he cocks his head to the side and that that it's it's not the same laughter it's more of a a feminine ah! <laughs> like a very like a very polite like a, a noble woman's polite that wasn't funny but I should laugh anyway kind of joke was told gotcha ah! just get in birdman <laughs> um and Y'all get y'all get inside, and uh, Audrey is making good time. Uh, though it, it is agitated, it, it's still injured, though it was greatly healed by ticks, um, and so it is wobbling just a little bit as it as it makes its way down and heading towards that temple, um, and uh, that's when uh, you hear a voice. Uh, you hear a voice as y'all come around a turn. You're not very far from the temple now, to be perfectly honest. You hear a voice say. Well, well, well. And you recognize it immediately. Uh, Lee, your character does. And you hear, oh, What have we got here? Throughout the, the front of the hut, you can see just standing in the middle of the road. Not, no, no sneaky or anything. Just a tiefling. Uh, a tiefling, I believe, with uh, reddish skin. Is that correct? Uh, dark, dark red skin. Yeah, in shadow really, he looks right, black. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Really dark, much darker than uh, Athora's. Yes, and uh, just uh, looks just looks very, very comfortable. The uh, sound of of uh, rebuke is heard again. Mm. Okay, then. And he says, "Well, I uh, never seen a bird riding in a bird before." <laughs> That's uh, that's a new one on me. <laughs> this, this, um, uh, the, the, he, the, the, the Pekenko puts together several, ver- several voice things, uh, to the effect of your mother goes to ye chicken all the time. <laughs> <laughs> your mother goes to ye <laughs> chicken much. all the time. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty much just kind of. Tries to put together several points of it. Um. <laughs> uh, to everyone except Penton, who is who has heard this sort of play before, it's it's disconcerting. Yeah, uh, to hear it's 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 very unsettling to hear. Even uh, if you have it, still disconcerting. Yes, yes, <laughs> you're 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 a little more instilling. Okay, um, and he says, uh, "Look, uh, I, I I know that you didn't want to get in with these uh, folks, but." Uh, they're making the same offer for the rest of them. So uh, just hop on out. We can take care of this business and we can be rich as kings. And all be worth it. And as he stands there, uh, you, Lee, uh, behind him, you see one more time uh, that elf mother. You see her uh, Osphalor. I'm sorry, Osf- yeah, Osphalor. And she's just standing and she's just looking at you. And he waits. What are you going to do? I'm going to. I'm going to. I'm going to make the assumption that the sparkly-looking one is in control of the hut. Okay. And I think make... that, based on everything, that's really easy to piece out. <laughs> <laughs> and and kind of make the motion to to stop. Um, I'll pull out one of my daggers and point it at him. At who? The, the evil tiefling. In in Eskia. Um, I know his name. Um, <laughs> and I'll, I'll actually say it. His voice, the, the, the same, the tiefling's voice comes out and you just go, Inaskia. Yeah. And, uh, in fact, you actually pull from the moment when he was trying to talk to the, uh, little girl mm-hmm. back when y'all were doing the heist. And he, you remember him saying, Oh, my name is Inaskia. And it's just this sickly sweet. Uh, that, that, that's saying. actually the exact one that comes out. Yeah, the 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 cloying, desperate uh-huh. to try and 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 pull away attention and, and be as uh, uh, ingratiating as possible with sharp teeth and horrifically dark skin. Uh, mm-hmm. That that kind of smells kind of funny because he's got a weird sulfury smell to him. It's, it's, yeah, um, and then point at the blade and actually shout. You done screwed up. So, at this moment, this is what what we generally refer to as a trap. Uh, however, 
the parties that be, one, rolled very, very poorly, and two, did not understand the nature of Audrey yes. and the fact that <laughs> Pinton basically has radar vision right now. And so, Pinton, you become aware of uh, three large figures closing in from the sides, trying to pincer attack you. Uh, Ineskia is literally just standing on the road in front of y'all, about 50 feet away. But these very large figures are closing in on you, uh, trying to get a surprise attack upon y'all, and they fail. Okay. Uh, what what would you like to do, Penson? They, they they will not get a surprise attack, but Wait, well, what, well, what, would what are these response? VLFs? Uh, they are um, ogre-sized creatures moving towards you uh the 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 difficult the bad part of the radar vision is it doesn't give you tons of detail well first i'll tell everyone hey there's giant well very large creatures uh headed our way from three directions to try and pin us in and and then i will tell andre andre if you can kill this guy you can eat him knock him out you can have him <laughs> <laughs> and you just uh, there there's in that in that moment before combat starts you just hear Audrey's right claw go shook <laughs> like like a, a like a bull before a matador uh, and i would like everyone to roll for initiative before we do that uh-huh certainly uh i would like to i would like to jump out um okay before before like penton does his thing because i've been with ineski a, a while i know the creature the man uh and i know what I, I i know he's got something up his sleeve if he's standing in the middle of the road mm -hmm. so can i see these large things Specifically going into this, knowing that we just encountered a smoke monster that wasn't actually a smoke monster, and perhaps said radar that I don't know he has, but might be seeing the illusion rather than the reality. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that is certainly possible. Also, uh, I just don't want to be in the hut anymore because it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you're you're all you're all too ready to get out of there. I kind of don't want to be in it anymore. Creeps me out. And uh you you certainly uh jump out of there and uh I I, I will certainly let you act from that area. Okay. Uh I'll do a spot uh, So uh speaking of uh, Lee, what is what did you roll? Uh Sorry, I need to turn my light on. It just got really dark here. Oh, that's a Nat 20 on my spot says 23. Okay. Um, uh, so that will definitely put you way up there. And uh, Marezzi. Uh, yeah. Can I jump out of the... Uh, mm, mm. <laughs> Can I jump out of the... Hmm. <laughs> mm, I'm going to throw a bolo at the, uh, at, the, at the dude standing in the middle of the road. Okay. Uh, but what what is your what was your initiative roll? Oh, sorry, six. Six, okay. Uh, and Tix, what is your uh, roll? Uh, seven. Seven for 14. Tix and Athora. Fourteen for Athora, and finally Pinton. Thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, that will actually bring it to you firstly. Okay, so can I see anything? Uh, yes, you you expected this. You you have been with this person for a while. You understand the way he works, and so you immediately dart left and right. Uh, you don't actually see you because of where you are. You don't mm -hmm. see there is actually a figure coming up from behind, but you see two figures coming up from the left and the right. I've put them in the Discord channel. The first two that you see, one is a monstrous ogre-like red creature in armor and the other one is a monstrous ogre-like creature in uh with a like a very pale blue skin one is red skinned and one is blue skinned and they are both charging you do um, they look like variations of the same <clears throat> species or do they look like distinct races they both they they both look like um it's kind of the way a mountain troll and a you know, um, 
a forest troll. <laughs> a forest troll uh, look very different, but but you can tell they're the same race. Okay, so yeah, they're variations of the same basic race. Uh-huh. And they are they are charging and they are screaming in another language that you do not understand. Um, and uh, they are attacking. But yes, you you saw them because you were ready for it. That was cool on the capture. Sorry. Oh, I just yeah, that was, was that thunder? That was thunder. Yeah. Yeah. Oof. I'll make a note of what time it was so Michael has a easier time. The uh, I, the the only thing that uh, even though it has in the picture, both of them have uh, what you see the uh, blue one to have is a uh, huge um, iron clubs that are spiked. Both of them have huge iron clubs that they are attacking with. Both of them are wearing armor. Uh, the red one is bigger though, and they do look physical. They don't look like smoky they, manifestations yeah, they, from the they, belt. They look they look very physical. As the the cobblestones crack, crack, crack underneath them, uh, the red one is about seven hundred fifty pounds. Yikes! And is eight feet tall. Like I said, they are uh, they 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 actually technically are a little smaller than ogres, but not by much. The red one is the closest. Where did the where did the cult get these guys from? That's a great question. Because it's just a bunch of it's just a bunch of dudes playing dress up in a in a in a sewer. Um, okay, so all right. Well, my focus is going to be uh, in Askia. Um, this guy set me up. Uh, we 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 were allies, and I kind of then he stole my crap, and and now he's going to pay. Um, mm-hmm. So. Can I, because I've been with this guy for so long, can I get advantage on every interaction that I have with him in terms of like combat and skill checks and all the rest of it? Just because I, he's been my partner well, for, uh, since see that here's the thing though. If, if I was to say that and, and agree, then he would also get advantage of you. So they would, yes, yes, he out. would. So they would cancel so they, out. They so cancel each other really out. matter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's fair. Um, but I am better than him. Um, uh, well, <laughs> I mean, let's find out. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, all right. Well, I guess we will find out. Uh, I am going to. Uh, I'm going to whip out my mirror and blind him with it. Okay. Uh, I have said that the sun uh, is well and up now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so r- roll to attack. It's a it's a straight attack roll, and you can certainly okay. use your dexterity bonus because that's exactly what this is. Oh, nice! Uh, that's an eighteen on the die plus five dexterity, so yeah, twenty three. Okay. Uh, now, obviously, this is not a blind like a spell, uh, no. but it, it does temporarily blind him. He will be for his next move blinded. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he, ah, he, he totally was not expecting that. Uh, he, he's used to you doing sneaky attack things, but not quite like that. Um, and that's how these things kind of cancel each other out. Uh, and as far as movement, where do you want to go? Uh, let me, let me just say very quickly, y'all are going up the main street. It's slightly, uh, if I may say, Ineskia has the high ground. It's slightly <laughs> uphill. And, um, the two... The blue is on, I'm sorry, the red is on the left-hand side uh, coming at you. The blue is on the right. And there's also a figure approaching from behind, though currently only Pinson is aware of that. Um, and uh, so where do you want to move, uh, Lee? Uh, I would like to... i actually like to try and get behind him while he's off balance with the blind. Uh, okay. silently, so he can't hear which way I've gone. Uh, at the same time, while I do that, I would also like to kick a stone out to the opposite direction that I've gone through, because he's going to be listening for me. Uh, yes. I know this man. He's, a, he's expecting... So if I can he, kick it definitely. to the left to make a sound, and I'll actually go the same way. I'll actually go the same way. Okay. So I'll, I'll uh, kick it to, the, to the, his left, and I'll follow it. To go behind him. Okay, so I definitely what I want is a um, uh, stealth roll, and I also want a uh, reflex attack. Okay, uh, stealth is very good. That's twenty-seven. Okay, that and, definitely works. <laughs> and you said reflex. Mm-hmm. That's just to, to the skill of the uh, 
Okay. That's also 27. <laughs> I have a 10 reflex, so. Yes. Uh, so. And a uh, 14 to move silently. <laughs> um, I know that, I know Marezzi, I think you said you were heading out. So you see this as he comes forward and a little yes. mirror comes out. You see the light flash in this guy's eye. You see him scream all at the same time as he's maneuvering around. You see a rock kick up from the ground, scatter off. Uh, Ineskia turns to the left as you move over to the right and you successfully get behind him. This, this move was entirely successful. And uh, this will actually bring it to the, um, oh, this is interesting. So um, the creature from behind is trying to attack Audrey. Um, <gasps> and so I will actually, instead of just using Audrey's armor class, which I have never told y'all, uh, I would like you to actually roll your arcana roll. Um since you were controlling it, we're currently Penson, and that okay. will be uh, Audrey's armor class at this moment. Oh boy, that's, please roll that's, well. That's not intimidating at all. Uh, <laughs> well, two. right now it's uh, twenty six. Mm. Uh, so it rolled a seventeen, and it has a nice bonus to hit, but that's not going to quite do it. Uh, and so that you, you all see, like suddenly. Pinton's eyes go up towards the heaven as he sees this figure coming from behind. Uh, and it's a, a slimmer version of the uh, big metal clubs that you see the other ones coming for. And Audrey, uh, t well, tell me, how would you have Audrey get out of the way? It would be a slide to the left. <laughs> it's a slide to the left. <laughs> and slide to the right. And then I jump to Doom. the right. <laughs> And uh, and whatever this creature is is not expecting that as uh, you whoop, move to the side and it scooches. It actually moves in front of Audrey and you can all see it now. Uh, it is a smaller, uh, sort of uh, stealthier, shall we say, uh, version of these other ones. It is actually green uh, and it is wearing a, a, a tattered green gray cloak. Uh, as it moves forward. And that will actually bring it to you, Athora. All right. Let's go ahead and attack. Or do I have, I have to get out of the chicken hut, right? Uh, yes, though you certainly can do that as part okay. of your movement. Uh, well, technically, that would be uh, the blue one. Okay. I can just imagine if there were people out on the street seeing two tieflings <laughs> in their city now. <laughs> yep, yep. Plus these uh, giant monsters. I could just... Well, <laughs> And oh, the the funny thing is, you actually can see people. They're you know, even though this is a pitch battle, they're like, yeah, but I can't, I can't not watch. <laughs> uh, I, I can't not see the most fascinating thing that's happened, you know, in ten years. Uh, they're they're peeking out of windows and looking out of you know uh, doorways and such uh, from a safe distance. These are the people slowing down on the on the northbound lane on the highway to watch the to look at the southbound accident. Yeah. Uh, uh, precisely, precisely. <laughs> so, uh, Athora, what did 17. you roll? Okay. That will hit. Uh, he does. He is armored, but uh, it's it's not covering all of his body. It's kind of like on his upper shoulders and such. Right. That's twelve points of damage. Uh, and he cries out, and uh, the blood that comes out is almost like it's like he's bleeding water. Just kind of. Boop, boop, boop comes out from him, and he uh, is not a fan of that, shall we say. Uh, that will actually bring uh, it to Aneskia. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you so much for reminding me. Go for your second roll. Natural 20. Nice. Boom. Nice. Uh, so go ahead and uh, roll that and double everything, as my house rule is requires. That's 17 points of damage. Okay. Very, very nice. Um, Wait, is that the double damage? The 17? Uh, Is that after doubling everything? I doubled the two dice, and do I double the added? You double the uh, everything, so you even your damage okay, bonus. So... That's my house rule, because you don't you do not do that in normal D&D. Okay. &D. That's a house rule of mine, to, to make... Uh, then that would make it 24. To make natural 20s more devastating. 24 points of damage. Dang. He's a he's an interesting looking fella, too. Yeah. Uh, he is. Why, why, he is. Why did I not uh, make one of these? 
Um, and he, uh, that you, you, you actually, the second attack slices across his unprotected belly and just water just pours out from his belly. And he cries out in a language that you do not understand. Um, he does not, not happy with you and he is very hurt. Uh, and that will actually bring it to an Eskia. He knows that you are somewhere behind him, but he was thrown off by that rock. So he is going to attack. Uh, he's going to try to like swing his dagger around behind, uh, or his short sword, I should say, with his minus gets a thirteen. Uh, so that's not going to hit. That's not going to nope. hit anyway. And even if he had hit, there's a fifty percent chance he missed because he's blinded. Mm-hmm. So uh, that will actually bring it to Pinton. So Pinton, you can either uh, control uh, Audrey or uh, act on your own. Hmm. Well, kick him in I the guts, Ken. I was gonna say, I feel like, um, <laughs> like Audrey is like laser uh, focused on this guy that's this tiefling. Um, I think I might just let her go after him on her own. Um, okay. So, uh, so we've got who do I have in my vision uh, from the doorway at this point? Uh, there's the uh, tiefling. Uh, there's the, the 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 creature that came up from behind. Was that the water one? Uh, no, the that water was the green one is one. to your right. Uh, okay. the, the the green one who was coming up from behind is now actually in front of Audrey because he missed and he, he was moving forward to attack and so whoop, right actually went right. forward. So he'll be the one that I send a, a lightning bolt at. Okay. Sound effect for added effect. Uh, uh that is uh, yes. twenty three points. Okay, uh, and you strike him dead on, and uh, he turns and looks at you and smiles, oh almost boy. as if he has a immunity to electricity. Dang it! Um, Shocking. That was that was uh, uh, just a random chance uh, of those, and unfortunately, yeah. he does. Uh, it, it's part of D anD. d It happens. Live uh, and uh, now it is the red one's turn, uh, and he is actually coming towards uh, you, Athora, because he saw you attack his brethren. Um, and he rolls a six and another six. Uh, so He's just real quick, since, getting he, it from since, all he, sides. since he whiffs twice, Athora, please tell me how you dodge this almost ogre-sized giant red-skinned creature with a giant iron club that is just trying to crush your skull. Uh, I... Slide to the left, slide to the left. <laughs> Bob and weave, Jim, Bob and weave. <laughs> and take it back now, y'all. Um... <laughs> First let her hop out the m- Porsche. Uh, I really duck down and do a really cool role like all spy movie style uh yes any any normal person wearing your armor who tried this would just like flop over (laughs) and just be stuck on the ground but you have been living in this armor for like the better part of a few years as you've been completing your quest to find these bandits and you just (laughs) and there's like a the sound of metal clanking as you come out of the roll just perfectly ready for more battle um and now it is actually the one who um, you had uh, successfully attacked, the uh, blue creature. And uh, it is going to hold out its hand and fire, and a jet of water strikes at you. And I would like you to make a uh, reflex saving throw. Uh, okay. 24. Nice. Uh, that is good because he rolled maximum damage. Uh, so you you actually take half damage. So uh, Athora, you are going to take ten points of damage. That would have done twenty. Just this this incredibly strong blast of water strikes you right in the face, and you manage to dodge just in the the nick of time uh, as it comes striking towards you. But that that could have been a lot worse if you hadn't dodged. Um, and that will actually bring it to Tix. Tix, tell me both what you want to mo- move uh, and what you want to do. Um, I want to uh, move.
move out of the hut and I will go towards um, the tiefling that was in front of the hut and run up and swing away at him with Destiny Seeker. Okay. All right. That is a 19 plus 6. Oh, wait. So that would hit. That's a hit. And the 19 (laughs) is a critical with Destiny Seeker. True. Uh, just, just a quick. Can I mm-hmm. block that? What? What do you mean? Can I block that? As you... in, like, like get in and just like no. Uh, I mean, you can try. Um, well, no, you. I mean, you really can't. It's a critical. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it, the truth is, is you don't really have that skill. And yeah, uh, I mean, just... I, I could I could certainly, you know, DM rule it. Uh, I mean, certainly um, Tix, you see that he's trying to get in the way, but you are just focused and rrr, and uh, you're that that attack goes through. Yeah. OK, so um, I'm swinging uh, almost like a golf swing. And I so i come up as the Kokra is uh, or uh, what is he? King uh, No. Oh, oh, oh the oh. tiefling. Yes. Uh, no, Lee's character. Okay. Kinku. Kinku. Thank you. Uh, as the Kinku is trying to step between it, I'm swinging up under his leg and up under the tiefling's thigh uh, because that's where he's most vulnerable. And so that is. That is a nice. Six, five, and six. Uh, so, uh, is he more than half hurt? Does he have? Has he um, taken any damage? What is, What is the total damage? Uh, Seventeen. Seventeen. Uh, Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-three points of damage, not including. Does is he? Does he get the necrotic damage if he's below half hit points? Yes. Okay. So that'd be uh, 26 points of damage. Okay. Two of it necrotic. Yes. as you, you the Not only is the strike into his legs uh, devastating, but you actually see that rot kind of go up, and, and Destiny Seeker goes, yes. Yes, justice. Um... And that will bring it to uh, Marezzi. How many or uh, ogre oni looking dudes are left? Uh, well, they're they're all left. Uh, red, blue, and green. Uh, the only one who's been damaged is blue, who's gotten very. All right, hit. then I'm going after blue. Okay, big blue. Fell off the table. Uh, that is a um, fourteen. Hello? Did I cut out? Are you there? Oops. That is a 14. A 14 will not hit. Uh, your next roll? Yes. Uh, fell off the table again. That's a nat 20, baby B. Nice, nice. Roll for that damage and double everything. <clears throat> 22. Nice. Uh, so, Marezzi, uh, describe to me how this, this watery huge ogreish like creature how you kill it it's got this big old chunky santa claus belly just gushing full of water i take the peak end of my halibut with the big pointy bit and just pop him <laughs> and there's a there's a moment where the with the the just the, not just the blade but the entire shaft of this long halberd, even taller than Marezzi, just vroom, goes into him, and there's a moment where you just hear, and he just explodes outwards, and just water sprays across all of you. This kind of foul, brackish water hits against all of you, uh, but does no damage. It's just gross. Can he please, uh, like, fly around like a deflating balloon? <laughs> 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 Yes, yes. Uh, there's just a little bitty bit of that. Not not too much, but just enough. Just enough. Uh, as Moretti, you, you take him down. It was a very nice hit. Uh, and that will actually bring it to Audrey. Yeah, I was going to ask if she get her, get, gets her yep, own. Yep, uh, she gets her, her own attack. She is attacking okay. independently. 
And All right. um so she actually got a 17 which will hit. All right. Be- also because of his minus because he's blinded. She does 15 points of damage. So nice. in just a very short period of time, um uh Ineskia has taken 41 points of damage. Uh, oh. so it's just taken a, a devastating amount of damage in a very short period of time. And he is very, very hurt. And that will actually bring it all the way back around to you, Lee. Uh, I need to get him out of danger because I have plans. Um, okay. I, I just, that is going to be challenging given everything that's going on. Oh yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. Okay. Just, just saying. Um, but, yeah. Okay. I'm going to the sound of a a traveling play, uh, like a, a traveling circus or theater. Theater walks out, uh, comes out. You can hear sort of sounds of music and things, but there's also the voice of "Hold, this one is mine" in a very theatrical tone, uh, and I will. Sever the tendons on the back of his knees. All right. Oh, 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 I can feel that. Oh. Uh, roll to attack. That's a nat twenty. <laughs> <laughs> um. So. So I'm rolling even, to. I'm. I'm rolling to injure. I'm not trying to kill. So. Yes. Uh, it's, so it's, with with the natural twenty and with the already catastrophic damage that he's taken. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say that this simply succeeds. Okay. So describe to me what you do. So in one smooth movement, he unsheathed the two blades from his belt, the two raven-hilted blades, crouches, and in a cross motion across both the backs of both knees, just shink, and then straight back into the scabbards again. Okay. Um, and I should note that unless you do something otherwise, Penton, uh, Audrey is going to continue to try to kill this individual. Just FYI. Um, but yes, it is, I agree. It is. No, okay. Just, just let you know. Um, it is the, uh, green creature's turn. Uh, he spins around. He was not expecting, uh, his brethren to fall quite so quickly. Uh, they, they were not used to that. Uh, he sees everything that's happened, and he will attack you, Marezi, mm. um, because you took out his uh, brethren with a uh, stunning little pop. I've got seventy hit points. Who even cares? <laughs> uh, and he is going to open his mouth and go, <sighs> and green. Fumes come out of his mouth in, I I, I suppose a, a correct way to put it would be a twenty foot cone. Mm. Um, and Fumes. so what, what I would like is both uh, you, Marezi, and um, Athora. You both need to make a fortitude saving throw. I will fort that too. Twelve. Twelve. Uh, Fifteen. Uh, unfortunately, Athora. <laughs> Uh, you are now poisoned. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> uh-huh. Easy with the ha ha. <laughs> you, you, you gotta put more <laughs> into it. Well, yeah. Give it some Nelson uh, months. So, Athora, <laughs> that does uh, eight points of damage. You've now taken 18 points of damage, and you are currently poisoned. Uh, and your turn, you will be able to save again um, to uh, fight off these effects. Right. Uh, and it's actually your turn, so please roll that one more time. 17. 17. So you, uh, uh, after this being sickened earlier, perhaps you're just more (laughs) used to it and just like, nope, 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 nope. And you fight it off and it is actually your turn. Okay. We'll attack the one that just attacked me, or where is he? Fair. That's a nine to hit. Unfortunately, that will not hit. Will your second attack? Here to hit. That will definitely hit. <laughs> 14 
points of damage. Okay. Uh, it's a good strike uh, across its side, and it, it uh, cries out, and you see little wisps of the green smoke come That's out of its mouth uh, as you again. do. <sighs> That's right. You're like, I, I am sick of feeling sick. It's all um, since I joined this group. And... Um, and it's only just begun. <laughs> it is uh, actually Ineskia's turn, and Ineskia is going to hold out a, a he he drops his uh, short sword and his dagger, and he holds out his hand to you, Lee, and he says, "Please, I'm begging you. You know I've saved your life. Just get me out of this." Place. And I'll let you uh, take an action in just a minute, but right now it is Penton's turn. Okay. Well, there is a giant, completely undamaged uh, giant red creature, uh, slightly damaged green one, and of course the uh, tiefling. Right. Well, um, lightning didn't work. Let's see what fire does. All right. <laughs> I'm um, assuming this is on the green one? Yes. So, yes. Scorching Ray, this is going to be a ranged attack. So it's, it says it's a ranged touch attack. Does that mean I use his touch armor class? Yes. Because yes. it's ignoring yeah. armor and such because flames? That's exactly. Because you're okay. just bathing him in flames. Yes. Okay. So that should make things a little easier. Yes, because uh, plus... he does have a plus six dexterity bonus, which he does not get to use. That's correct. Because you um, specify that. And plus that is a 21. To hit. That will definitely hit. Now, All I right. should warn you that he has a secondary immunity besides electricity. It is not fire. <laughs> <laughs> I figure, you know, if he's, you know, nature based, he probably doesn't like fire. Um, so you don't happen to have a heart see. spell in there, do you? A what? A heart spell? Go through all the elements? <laughs> no, I wish. Um, uh, okay, so that's, and that's two rays. Do. -do. I need to look that up. Did someone make a Captain Planet role playing game? Um, that is Surely someone must have. 28 points of damage. And there is no saving throw for Scorching Ray. Correct. As long as I hit. Uh, yep. So that that is 42 points of damage. Uh, as you cook him. Uh, he does not die, but he is very badly injured. And he, he turned. To you again, as you like, almost expecting like another lightning attack, and it just like you see his eyes widen as the flames uh, bathe him, and he and his uh, his gray tattered cloak like burns off of him, and he screams, and his his like whitish hair uh, is mostly burned off as he screams. Uh, he's very very much hurt. Yeah, yay! Um, that is a, a really good hit, and that will actually bring it to the red one, who is still trying to kill you, Marazzi. Cool. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, he well, he is trying, trying to kill you, but uh, he does uh, kind of takes a, a bit of a, a thing from his brethren, uh, and he opens his mouth and he spits flame. Uh, and by all of you, I mean you and Athora, because you are uh, in range for that. You both need to make a um, reflex saving throw. Wonderful. Joy. Okay. Oh dear. Poor Riley's just getting the, the getting paddled ah, over here. Natural twenty. Yeah. Seventeen. Natural twenty and a seventeen. So you both take half. Oh, only half. Which is really, really good. Uh, so <laughs> that's that's the relief of a D and D play. Oh my god, only half. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, because he did twenty four points of damage, <gasps> reduced to half. So, Athora and um, Merezi, you both take 12 points of damage, which is a lot less than 24. One might even say half, but that's still 30 points of damage that you've taken, Athora. So, that's you, you are not feeling great. Uh, you don't have any particular resistance to fire, do you? As a tiefling? I don't Should do. do, do yes, she does. I was going to say, do tiefling? Yeah. So I wasn't yeah, thinking about that. It should be... Wouldn't she only take quarter damage? Yeah. Half of half? I, I believe so, yes. So it's quarter of that. So you actually only take six. Oh, that's so, much better. so reduce that. So that's you've taken 24 points of damage. Um, Rezzy so, takes all the damage and she does not care. It's fine. <laughs> it's warm. Rezzy. It's nice. 
Marizzi, it's, this is just a warm bath for Marizzi. Uh, I, What's I will, that? I don't know what that is. Given given all the cra- a bath, that's a good point. Uh, given all the crazy stuff that's going, I will definitely say that Aki is not on you at this moment. There's way too much craziness. Oh uh, yeah, Aki, Aki is in inside Audrey. Um, and uh, speaking of uh, those, so blue is no more, so they don't get to attack. That brings it to Tix. Um, Tix is going to lay hands on uh, the evil tiefling and uh, do inflict wounds. Okay. Now, since this is a touch attack, uh, I am uh, this time, I will say if you do want to try and stop him, you can, uh, Lee. That would use your attack for next round, though. Uh, I mean, I did make it pretty bloody clear, but obviously this group really does not care. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm getting in between. Okay. Uh, and that and means again, also... this one is mine. Okay. Uh, so I, I, I will give you a choice, Tix. You can try to you can simply call off the attack uh or you can just continue and try to make the attack through him um we're in total homebrew territory yeah we're in yeah (laughs) so um tix will try and reach around the kenku okay uh so just make a roll to attack first of all okay and that is a non-natural 19. Okay. Uh, and so this would be... Um, this is really like a reflex move. Uh, so this would be like a reflex uh, save, basically, uh, Lee. Okay. Really? You're going to give him his best stat? Really? <laughs> well, uh, there, there's, there's a yes and a no to that. Huh. I rolled a, I rolled a 19 so that's a 29 yeah okay yeah so he he does succeed um but you also I will take the damage though so yeah you're going fine. he's going to take the damage all right yeah um so roll that damage uh the only reason I'm allowing this is because it's a touch based attack it's kind of hard to yeah okay do this if you're swinging a, an axe um that is. Four and four plus six, uh, so fourteen points of damage, necrotic okay. damage. Uh, is you you reach out and grab his hands, and you actually feel it flowing up into you, uh, Lee, as as the the necrotic rotting damage flows into your hands. It is horrible. You have never felt anything like this before. Um, and Break my teeth and hold steady. Okay. It was a bad and... choice, bird. <laughs> re- that's the same words and the same voice come right back out at you, buddy. You just hear it back to you. That was a bad choice, bird. Sass lord. Good you know and, that. <laughs> and uh, Marezzi, the it bird, is your turn. The bird is not in the sentence. <laughs> uh, yes, that was a bad choice. Uh, yeah. Milk was a bad choice. Marezzi, to attack. it is your turn. Uh... Let's see. Is the red one still living? Uh, the red one is uninjured. The green one is very injured. Hmm. Yeah. If if I can do if I can get to him without getting an attack of opportunity from the red, I'm going to attack the green one. No, with your halberd and with everyone kind of being you and Athora are just in the thick of it right here. You can attack whoever you want. All right. Uh, that's a eighteen. That will hit. Seven. Uh, seven. Oh, wait. Points of damage. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, it uh, uh, could not be uh, more almost dead, but it is not dead yet. Uh, it is very, very, very hurt. Your turn. All right. Uh, I'm going to try and attack it again. Okay. That's a uh, sixteen. Uh, twenty-six. That will definitely hit, and I uh, it had one hit point left. So please describe to me how you dispatch this uh, green uh, creature who is mostly burned. 
Given that uh, I just rolled for 13 points of damage, I think I decapitate it. Absolutely, absolutely. You come around, your first attack slices in, and then just... And uh, it, its head literally bounces off the red one, uh, the largest of the three. Sorry, uh, big bro. And just like green blood that's like got little wispy smoke uh, kind of wasps off the uh, skull. I mean, off its chest. <clears throat> And uh, that will actually bring it to Audrey. And Audrey <laughs> is still trying to kill um, Ineskia. Uh, Audrey rolls a natural 20. Of course she does. The only way you can block this is if you roll another natural 20. So you can try if you want. But... Oh, I'm going to try. Okay. This is important. Because natural 20s always hit. Uh, unless there's something very special like that. Yeah. Hmm. Yes. Shit. No, I actually have to roll that again. It was cocked. But it rolled. I, I landed on a uh, on the two, but it was cocked, so I got a twenty. You rolled a natural twenty. I did roll a natural twenty. Okay. It's close. Uh, so, it was so close. Uh, it teetered on the edge so for a while. You look up and you see this chicken foot coming down upon you. <laughs> and that's where we'll end. Chafing armor, 92. I don't like to break in battle, but we have gone so long. Y'all guys yeah. have been doing awesome. I'm and so we, tired. And it's really, 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 really yeah. late. And this is almost this is almost three episodes worth uh, that we've done tonight. Yeah. So, a lot uh, of combat. We're going to break here. Thank you all so much for playing. We're going to wrap up. Uh, I'm going to uh, keep uh, my little sheet here with the damage on it. Uh, keep some careful notes so we can pick right up from where we left off. Good, good. Um, thank you all for playing. I had a zesty time. Yes. Uh, good night, everyone. Good and night. we will roll with you soon. <laughs>